You have entered protected space. Please leave or be terminated. The message blinked in every discernible tongue and galactic standard, across every screen-bearing device in the entire ship. No matter how many times the team had been drilled for this, it was never as unsettling as seeing it while three full jumps from the nearest starbase. We had four jumps worth of fuel at a full tank. Anything larger, and we were told that we wouldn't make it through the no man's land of glass planets between Excision Zill and Valkyrie 7. Even then, the jumps had to be made at precisely the right cycles and coordinates. How one keeps a mind in hyperspace is beyond me. GC-2371, transport vessel, permission to dock under null protocol. My appendages shook as I typed out the message. Morse code was only taught for this mission, and I hoped I got it right. Please hold for verification. The crew were deathly silent. Breaths turning into rotations, and we hoped our lives would not be forfeit. Null protocol accepted. Valkyrie 7 initializing. Please hold location to prevent gravitational errors. No one dared touch the controls. We all watched in awe and shock as a moon appeared to warp into the void 20 clicks from us. Even at that range, the tug on our systems was noticeable. The moon split apart into rings, each spinning ominously. Locomotion override complete. Please enter safe crew gravity levels in galactic standard and prepare for docking. I hesitantly typed in 2.3 and waited while our propulsion system turned on and moved us carefully forward. As we entered the tunnel-like moor of the station, the thudding of magnetic anchors pummeled our collective hearing apparati, and a relieved sigh was let out amongst the crew. The bulkhead on our ship hissed, and a single bipedal creature walked in to meet our group. Zell, Fendasili, Grandut, Mefengl, Hush, and Golly. I recognize all of your ambassadors, but who are you? The Bean's Galactic Common was perfect. No hint of accent being found. The mirror polished gold of his faceplate gave away nothing. Hollandashi, sir. No names were to be given beside that of your race. To these beings, none of that mattered. That fact had been drilled into my head a thousand times over. Arrival to the Galactic Council approximately 290 standard cycles ago. The being considered this for a moment, before apparently nodding to no one. I see. Your crew stays with the ship. You can come with me. The rest of the ambassadors will wait for another escort. As much as I wanted to stay within the relative safety of the others, I knew this was how it was to go. The procedures were tested and true, supposedly, and so far we had made contact with the station and everyone was alive. That was better than I had been prepared for. The figure and I boarded a small pod and floated to the loading dock. I took the chance to glance around. The station was huge. Built for trading, no doubt, but it was empty. Hauntingly so. No traders landed here anymore. We stepped out of the pod and walked across the deck. I cannot explain how unsettling it is to only hear the click of another's grab boots on a trade dock. I sighed in relief as we stepped through an airlock on the far end and the room pressurised. The biped beckoned me to a platform and the rush of force as it started to move almost threw me to the ground. Now, the biped began, as it is your species' first encounter with us, you will have a little more freedom than the others. Take this. The figure handed me a syringe. I had not been briefed in this and tried to be polite. I don't understand. The being tilted its head, or what I assumed was his head, and seemed to study me for a moment. Ah, it is working as intended then. All the others have gone through this, they just can't speak on it. Inside that syringe is a batch of nanites. It prevents you from spreading what you see and hear here to anyone else. Things started to make sense to me now. 
Why no one else had been able to fly the ship? Why no one could tell me what or who exactly we were going to meet? Only the procedures. I sighed and injected the mystery fluid into my suit port, shaking as I seemed to flood my veins. After I regained control of my homeostatic abilities, I looked up at the being. Anything else? No. Please step through the door. I hadn't even noticed that the platform had stopped moving. The door opened and soft music drifted from my mind. I shook my head, trying desperately not to get lost in its hypnotic notes. A fan of Tychowski, are you? I startled at the strange being in front of me. It was probably half again as tall as me and built like a monster. All muscle, in a way that only high gravity creatures were. Almost devoid of fur, yet definitely warm blooded. Odd, really. Two muscled upper appendages and two well muscled lower appendages. No natural armor or weapons. I was almost feeling better. Almost. Its two seen apparatuses were opaque and seemed to be divided into separate sections. One could get lost in the almost tangible dance of colours in the middle, but the scent of voice sent shivers down my back tubes. I knew the beings were alpha predators beforehand, or this arrangement of scene apparatus and limbs would have sent me into shock. I'm unaware of what you mean. Straightforward too. Must be our lucky day. The being showed a predatory set of teeth. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. I was recently a scientist and was put on this mission. Please have mercy. The thing laughed. The first one always is. I'm sure you have questions, but so do we. This way, please. The being led me to a gathering of its kind. They talked and laughed. Various food and drinks littering the hollow screen they sat around. Almost in unison, they looked up and stared before they exchanged some sort of, probably, organic material between them. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have acquired the new one. This is Hondashi. Oh, damn. Lost again. One of the group begrudgingly handed another piece of organic material to a member of the group. I looked at my escort questioningly. It simply shrugged. Tradition. These animals bet on everything. I shook my head. So did the Zell. This got a roar from the table, and a retelling of many stories. I would find out later that these creatures had taken the first Zell ambassador for everything they had. The poor man had to rebuy all his adornments when he got home. I now understood the no gambling on mission part of the training. A moment later, the mood turned serious. Why are you here? I shook my head and handed them a data chip. It's designed so old, most species have forgotten how to use them. I'm not even sure. I was just told to give you this, and you would know what to do with it. Pluto 10, lock down the table. A female, they had given me a rundown on that at least, called out. Table isolation in effect, it is safe to proceed. The voice came from nowhere and everywhere at once. The lady dropped the chip on the table and files spun in the air. Each member grabbed a different info bank and silence hung heavy. I started to fidget in my chair as they read, absorbed in a language I could not read. Slowly they sat back, a somber air replacing the light-hearted mood from earlier. We're going to have to move the planet. My escort spoke up. His dancing green eyes all of a sudden monotone and serious. Normally I would fight you on that, but this is... It's bad. A quiet lady sat back. A look at what almost registered as defeat in her dark brown eyes. I think we should talk to the government head first. As the other lady spoke up, the bearing of a diplomat took hold of her. No need. A man with grey hair and glasses looked up from his documents. The release form has already been signed. What about for that one? A new voice caused everyone to look up. The man was tall, 
But more than that, his face carried power and knowledge with it. We haven't asked. The diplomat answered and turned to me. Are you going home or staying here? I threw up all four of my tentacles in surprise. I haven't been prepared for this. Can I ask a few questions first? The man with the glasses looked up at the newcomer. His papers are here, but he hasn't signed them. The newcomer looked surprised. They followed protocol. My species is very good with protocols. We oversee most immigration offices and many of us are stationed at headquarters. I answered, still shaken, but facts were comforting. Ask your questions then. The tall one sat on one of the couches and the group leaned forward. A younger life form would have returned to goo, but my chitin had hardened years ago. Can you actually move a planet? No offence, but you still use centrifugal force for gravity, and you use magnet anchors. The tall one leaned back and smiled that predatory grin. They haven't failed us yet. This made sense in hindsight. With no trades, there was no reason to show off one's technological prowess, and force nets were expensive to upkeep. The answer gave me nothing substantial, but also told me they weren't going to leak their secrets. If I stay, what becomes of me? You never go home, and you will be granted no contact with anyone outside the dead zone. You join our scientists and researchers until you die. The quiet one spoke up. But funding is never an issue. You get a personalised meal schedule, lodgings and choice of projects, unless there is an emergency. She shrugged. That offer is tempting, besides never going home. What is the catch? My escort smiled. Straightforward. It's a nice change. Unfortunately, we can't tell you unless you decide to stay. The chance to spend the rest of my days in search of something new warred with my training. I needed to know to make this decision, though. I sighed. My bioluminescent cells rippled. I study temporal tethers. Can I continue that here? They weren't supposed to know. Ooh, it can break protocol. The diplomat laughed and the group relaxed. Are you on board? If that answer is yes, then I have no reason to refuse. I just ask that the rest be returned. I piloted the ship here. Welcome to the crew, then. My name is Admiral Johnson. The tall one reached out one of his upper appendages and I hesitantly shook it, thanking the mother pod that the suit was reinforced. Sign this, then you get your answers. The grey-haired man adjusted his glasses and handed me a data pad. I signed the paper and the group introduced themselves. The quiet one was Mia Singh, lead containment specialist. The diplomat was Alexandra. She refused to give me her last name, but she was indeed a diplomat. The grain man was Igor Lebendev, and he was the group's lawyer. My escort was Michael Brown, head of security. As we finished up, I asked the question that had been burning in my mind since this mission started. What species are you? The group stopped suddenly, as if they had forgotten something important. The Admiral spoke up. We are the Wardens, but your history knows us as humans. Our home system is Sol. My kite almost came unglued at this. Everything made sense now. The empty seat to the Council, the secrecy. The reason they were abducting a whole planet. Humans. Every history book had told me they were gone. Not destroyed, just gone. They were not, and I had just agreed to prison duty with them. Sol was the middle of the old graves. I only now understood what those old graves were. Humans guarded those things that best not even be whispered in the edges of dreams. I was now locked in, with the monsters of the universe, and I didn't know if the monsters or their keepers were more dangerous.